ask ourselves, but we don't get any answers. We have a chance to build a new relationship. Hopefully, this relationship will be for the best to us in order to build a better future for our country. On behalf of my generation, I would like to say that due to poverty, many had to cross oceans in quest for a better life. At times, they die. At times, they starve. It's hard for them to survive. As for Burkina Faso, it's been eight years since we have been facing the most barbaric and violent form of uh, colonialism, barbarism. We are imposed this modern form of slavery. We were taught one thing. As slave that cannot rebel does not deserve pity. Hier, le président Vladimir Poutine a annoncé dans la l'envoi des céréales en Afrique, nous sommes bien contents. Mais aussi, c'est un message passé à nos chefs d'État africains. Will the West let go of its hold on Africa's alliance, or will it set aside its ego? Western nations like France have collaborated with Africa on their terms, but times have changed. Africa now demands France adhere to African terms or withdraw from the continent. Recently, Ibrahim Traoré issued a stern warning to French General Le Quintre regarding the potential recolonization of Africa. This signals that African leaders are not hesitant to confront the West. However, the question remains. Will France comply with Africa's demands, or will it disengage from Africa altogether? Let's find out. In a monumental address that rippled through the corridors of diplomacy, Ibrahim Traoré, a towering figure in African politics, warned French General Le Coentre, signaling a pivotal moment in Franco-African relations. Traoré's admonition encapsulates the simmering tensions surrounding Africa's struggle for sovereignty, economic self-determination, and the enduring specter of colonialism. The words illuminate the complex power dynamics that have long defined the relationship between France and its former colonies. This warning is not merely a singular event, but a culmination of historical grievances, contemporary struggles, and future aspirations. It highlights the profound challenges facing African nations as they navigate a path toward genuine independence and agency in the global arena. In this video, we will let's analyze the key points of Ibrahim Traoré's warning. What was his agenda? In African politics, Ibrahim Traoré is a formidable voice of dissent against the vestiges of colonialism and neocolonialism that continue to shape the continent's destiny. His recent warning to French General Le Coentre represents a bold assertion of African agency and a poignant indictment of the enduring grip of former colonial powers on the continent's resources, governance structures, and socio-economic fabric. At the heart of Traoré's message lies a sense of apprehension about the resurgence of colonial ambitions in Africa. Drawing upon a richness of historical grievances and contemporary struggles, Traoré articulates a multifaceted critique of France's actions in Africa, spanning economic exploitation, military intervention, and cultural hegemony. It all started with economic exploitation. Traoré's warning comes through loud and clear, hitting us like a blast from the past. It's a wake-up call that shakes Africa's collective memory, reminding us of a time when colonial powers treated the continent like their future. Yet Traor's warning reminds us that the legacy of exploitation lives on. It's still there in the unfair trade deals that disadvantage African countries. It's in the way big corporations swoop in to grab Africa's resources, leaving crumbs for those living there. And it's the crushing debt that keeps African nations stuck in a cycle of poverty. But there's a silver lining to this dark cloud. Traore's message is a rallying cry urging us to fight against exploitation. It reminds us that even in the face of adversity, there's hope for a brighter future. Traore's warning doesn't just stop at economic exploitation. It pulls back the curtain on another insidious aspect of neo-colonial domination, military intervention. It's like shining a spotlight on the shadows where foreign powers lurk wielding their military might to maintain control long after colonial flags have been lowered. Think about it. 
French military bases dot the African landscape like pieces on a chessboard, each strategically positioned to safeguard France's interests. And it's not just about having a presence, it's about covert operations and behind-the-scenes actions to keep African nations in check, like pieces on a game board. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Triori's critique isn't just about pointing fingers, it's about sounding the alarm on the real threat posed by foreign military presence. It's a reminder that even as African nations strive to assert their sovereignty and chart their path, they're constantly under the shadow of external interference. It's like trying to steer a ship through treacherous waters while someone else pulls the strings. But Traore's warning is a call to action, a reminder that the fight for true independence isn't over yet. It's a rallying cry for African nations to stand tall and reclaim their right to self-determination, free from the shackles of neo-colonialism. Traore's warning doesn't just focus on economic and military aspects. It delves into the subtler but equally potent realm of cultural hegemony. It's like shining a light on how France has used its cultural influence to shape its relations with Africa. And it's not just about sharing baguettes and berets. France has wielded its cultural clout like a weapon for centuries, spreading its language, values, and norms across Africa. On the surface, it might seem like a harmless cultural exchange, but beneath it lies a more sinister agenda. The assimilation and subjugation of African identities under the weight of Western hegemony. Traore's message isn't just a finger-wagging critique, it's a rallying cry for preserving African heritage and rejecting cultural imperialism disguised as friendly outreach. It's a call to arms against the erasure of African identities in the face of Western dominance. Edward Said's seminal work, Orientalism, highlights the role of culture in perpetuating systems of colonial domination and othering. Said argues that Western powers have historically constructed Orientalist narratives that depict non-Western cultures as exotic, inferior, and in need of civilizing intervention. The dominant nation seeks to impose its cultural norms and values upon others through cultural imperialism, legitimizing its hegemonic control over its societies. Traore's warning reminds us that cultural imperialism is just as damaging as economic exploitation and military intervention, and it's time for Africa to reclaim its cultural sovereignty and stand tall against the tide of Western influence. In his Discipline and Punish work, Michel Foucault discusses why a nation tries to control a country's military, culture, and economy. Foucault's analysis of power relations elucidates how institutions and structures exert control over individuals and populations through mechanisms of surveillance, discipline, and normalization. Applied to the context of nations, this analysis suggests that the desire to control another nation's culture, military, and economy stems from a quest for dominance and hegemony, wherein the dominant nation seeks to impose its norms, values, and interests upon others. So, Ibrahim Traoré's warning to French General Le Cointre transcends the world of mere diplomatic rhetoric, offering a searing indictment of the enduring legacy of colonialism and neo-colonialism in Africa. As African nations stand at a crossroads, grappling with nation-building, economic development, and regional integration challenges, Traore's message serves as a beacon of hope and a call to action for a future defined by genuine independence, solidarity, and self-determination. But how have French-African relations been? Was there a need to issue this warning from the African side? One must delve into the history that binds France and its former colonies to comprehend the gravity of Ibrahim Traoré's warning and its implications for Franco-African relations. The roots of this relationship trace back to the era of European colonial expansion, when France, along with other European powers, carved up the African continent through the imposition of artificial borders and the exploitation of its vast resources. French colonization in Africa was characterized by a unique blend of direct and indirect rule, wherein indigenous institutions were often co-opted or subverted to serve French interests. From the shores of Senegal to the heartlands of Algeria, France's imperial ambitions left an indelible mark on the socio-political landscape of the continent, shaping everything from language and law to culture and commerce. Yet the end of formal colonial rule in the mid-20th century did not herald the dawn of a new era of equality and partnership between France and its former colonies. 
Instead, it gave rise to a new form of domination known as neo-colonialism. African nations nominally achieved independence but remained economically, politically, and militarily beholden to their former colonial masters. We have talked about the areas where France maintained influence, but how did they do it? In the economic sphere, France maintained its stranglehold on key sectors of the African economy through a web of trade agreements, currency arrangements, and investment policies that favored French interests at the expense of African development. The CFA franc, a currency pegged to the euro and used by 14 African countries, epitomizes this unequal relationship, perpetuating a cycle of dependency and underdevelopment that has hindered Africa's economic progress for decades. Militarily, France has retained a significant presence in Africa through its network of military bases, interventionist policies, and strategic alliances with local strongmen and dictators. From Operation Serval in Mali to Operation Barkhane in the Sahel, French military interventions have ostensibly aimed at combating terrorism and restoring stability, but have often exacerbated conflict and fueled resentment among local populations. Culturally, France has wielded its soft power to maintain its influence in Africa, promoting the French language, culture, and values as symbols of modernity and progress. Yet, beneath this veneer of cultural exchange lies a deeper agenda of cultural imperialism, wherein African identities are subsumed under the hegemony of Western norms and standards. However, cracks in the Franco-African relationship have emerged in recent years. The loss of France's hold in the Sahel and its diminishing influence across the continent signal a seismic shift in power dynamics as African nations assert their sovereignty and demand equal treatment on the global stage. How did the other African nations respond to this? Ibrahim Traoré's warning to French General Le Cointre reverberates as a critique of France's actions in Africa and a rallying cry for African unity and agency in the face of external pressures. Across the continent, African leaders and citizens are increasingly vocal in their demands for sovereignty, self-determination, and equal footing in international affairs. A long history of struggle against colonialism, apartheid, and neo-colonialism has shaped African unity. From the pan-African movements of the early 20th century to the liberation struggles of the 1960s and 1970s, Africa's journey toward unity and independence has been marked by both triumphs and setbacks. Today, the African Union AU stands as a symbol of Africa's collective aspirations for peace, development, and prosperity, serving as a platform for dialogue, cooperation, and solidarity among member states. In recent years, African nations have taken proactive steps to assert their sovereignty and challenge external interference. From renegotiating trade agreements to diversifying diplomatic alliances, African leaders are increasingly assertive in defending their national interests and advancing a vision of Africa free from external domination. One notable example of an African agency is the expulsion of foreign military forces from countries like Niger and Chad, signaling a decisive break from past subservience to foreign powers. These actions reflect a growing determination among African nations to chart their course and take control of their security and defense capabilities. At the same time, African leaders are forging strategic alliances with like-minded partners who share their commitment to sovereignty and self-determination. Initiatives such as the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, and the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, offer opportunities for African nations to strengthen regional integration, promote economic development, and assert their influence on the global stage. Beyond geopolitics, the African response to external pressures is also evident in the cultural sphere. From the resurgence of African languages and traditions to the flourishing of African art, music, and literature, Africa's cultural renaissance is a testament to the resilience and creativity of its people in the face of historical and contemporary challenges. What impact will confronting France have on Africa? Will this make an impact? Firstly, confronting the French general Le Cointre extend far beyond Africa's borders, eliciting varied reactions and implications from global actors. As Africa asserts its sovereignty and challenges the legacy of colonialism, the response from European and Western powers, including France, reflects a complex interplay of interests, concerns, and strategic calculations. For France, Traoré's warning represents a stark reminder of the shifting geopolitical landscape in Africa, 
and the diminishing hold of former colonial powers on the continent. The loss of French influence in the Sahel and other parts of Africa signals a seismic shift in power dynamics, prompting concerns about the erosion of France's strategic interests and influence in the region. In response, France has sought to recalibrate its approach to Africa, adopting a more nuanced and pragmatic stance that balances its strategic interests with the aspirations of African nations. From diplomatic overtures to economic incentives, France has sought to reaffirm its commitment to Africa while adapting to changing realities. Yet, the challenges facing France in Africa extend beyond mere diplomatic action. The rise of new actors on the continent, including China, Russia, and other emerging powers, presents a formidable challenge to France's traditional dominance in Africa. As these powers seek to expand their influence and leverage economic resources, France faces increasing competition for market access, resources, and strategic assets in Africa. Moreover, Traoré's warning underscores broader concerns about the future of European engagement in Africa. With the United States shifting its focus towards other regions and the rise of populist movements questioning the merits of international engagement, Europe finds itself at a crossroads in its relationship with Africa. The loss of French influence in the Sahel and other parts of Africa has prompted soul-searching among European policymakers about the continent's strategic importance and the need for a coherent and coordinated approach to address the challenges and opportunities it presents. So, Trauer's warning serves as a wake-up call for Europe to re-evaluate its priorities and commitments in Africa. From security cooperation to development assistance, Europe must adapt its policies to reflect dynamics and respond effectively to African nations' aspirations for greater autonomy and self-determination. At the same time, Traoré's warning has broader implications for global geopolitics, highlighting the shifting balance of power in Africa and the emergence of new centers of influence. As African nations assert their sovereignty and challenge external interference, the traditional dominance of Western powers in Africa is being increasingly questioned, opening up new opportunities for cooperation and competition among global actors. What's the right approach for France to follow if it wants to stay in Africa? France should adopt a collaborative, respectful, and equitable approach to maintaining its presence and influence in Africa while fostering mutually beneficial relations. Firstly, France should prioritize building genuine partnerships with African nations based on mutual respect, equality, and shared interests. This shift entails moving away from paternalistic and neo-colonial attitudes towards a more inclusive approach that respects African sovereignty and agency. Secondly, France should focus on supporting African economic development in ways that empower local communities, promote sustainable growth, and reduce dependency on foreign aid. This could involve investing in key sectors such as infrastructure, education, healthcare, and technology, and facilitating trade and investment opportunities that benefit both French and African businesses. Additionally, France must uphold and promote human rights, democratic governance, and the rule of law in its relations with African nations. This includes supporting efforts to strengthen democratic institutions, protect civil liberties, combat corruption and impunity, and foster political stability and social cohesion. France should also embrace and celebrate Africa's rich cultural diversity and heritage while recognizing the contributions of African diaspora communities to French society. This would involve promoting cultural exchange, dialogue, and understanding between France and African nations, and supporting initiatives that preserve and promote African ties and mutual appreciation. Furthermore, France should cooperate with African nations to respect national sovereignty, uphold human rights, and address shared security challenges such as terrorism, transnational crime, and conflict resolution. This could involve providing training, capacity building, and logistical support to African security forces and supporting peace building and conflict prevention efforts. Lastly, France should prioritize diplomatic engagement and dialogue with African nations to address common challenges, resolve disputes, and advance shared interests. By participating in regional and multilateral forums, such as the African Union and the United Nations, and engaging in constructive dialogue with African leaders and civil society organizations, France can strengthen its ties with African nations and contribute to peace, stability, and prosperity for both French and African citizens. If France comes to African terms, will it collaborate with it? 
If France approaches Africa mutually respectfully, African nations will likely be more open to collaboration. However, the extent of collaboration will depend on various factors, including the sincerity of France's approach, the history of Franco-African relations, and the perceived benefits for African nations. African nations may be willing to collaborate with France if they perceive that such collaboration aligns with their national interests and development priorities. This could include economic development, infrastructure investment, education, healthcare, and technology transfer. If France demonstrates a genuine commitment to supporting African development on terms that respect African sovereignty and agency, African nations may be more inclined to engage in collaborative efforts. Moreover, African nations' willingness to collaborate with France will also depend on the nature of the collaboration and the perceived benefits for both parties. If France offers meaningful support, resources, and expertise contributing to African development and prosperity, African nations may see value in collaboration and be more receptive to working with France. Ultimately, the success of collaboration between France and African nations will depend on the ability of both parties to build trust, foster mutual understanding, and work towards common goals in a spirit of partnership and cooperation. Suppose France is genuinely committed to respecting African sovereignty, promoting development, and fostering inclusive growth. In that case, African nations are more likely to collaborate with France and seize the opportunities for mutual benefit and prosperity. Do you think now is the time for Western nations to agree to Africa's terms? Will they do it? In the comment section, let us know what the West would prefer. Losing Africa's alliance or agreeing to Africa's terms. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.